Hello and welcome to week 28 of this 52 week series for the Web Pro on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. My name is Scott Forsyth and today I want to talk to you about shared configuration. So this is the third week in a mini sub-series regarding shared web farms and what we want to be able to do here is have a website that is highly available and also scalable. So what I'm going to show you here with two servers can work whether it's two servers or, or 200 servers really. Uh, I guess there's more considerations once it gets really large. And so what we've done here so far is in the previous weeks, two weeks ago we covered setting up a domain and we added the member server and last week we set up DFS which is an option that I recommend in this situation. It's not the only option. There's other good options to keep the content in sync. And a real quick refresher if we go to start and computer and see inet pub and I had just the example text document from last week so let's actually delete this and we'll do one new one and we'll just call this test.text with the word test in it and if we open up notice the background color will change now we have this other server here and we're going to go to the same location see inet pub is share config and now you can see this test and of course actually because of last week I am showing hidden files and that's why we can see the DFS private folder here. But you can see here the test.txt and the information is here. So now what we have is the two folders are in sync and as soon as I make a change, for example, I'm going to delete this and go back to the other node and notice it's immediately deleted. So this is a key for us in the share configuration. So now what we want to be able to do is not just content, which is what we covered last week, we want to take IIS itself and we want to have the IS configuration replicate back and forth immediately in real time. Now let's go back in time. In IS six days, if you want to keep nodes in sync, it was actually fairly difficult. You had to do, there was a tool called iscfng.vbs, is a VBS script, or potentially you could write your own. And there was a lot of issues because there was a lot of server-specific information in the configuration. And if we go to it here and see Windows System 32, INET serve config and application host config. What the IS team has done for us with IS7 is removed everything related to the server information. And if you go into places like even the site, and in fact you can even use environment variables for certain paths, which is great in case they happen to be different on machines, although I'd recommend you keep the machines too same config as much as possible. But notice there's no, in fact if I go to the app pools here, and well I guess in this case we, we're not specifying an identity, but if we were specifying a specific identity you're not going to see some of those issues that we had in the past. So as long as you use a domain credential that's available in all the machines it will actually replicate back and forth nice and cleanly. So what we want to do is take these two files here administration.config and application config, and we want to have them run from the same location or a copy of them replicated between the two machines. So this is a new feature in IS7 called share config and we can access it here from the top level and we go here to the share configuration and so now there's two aspects to it. The first thing we need to do is take the configuration which is in the folder I had just shown you here C Windows System 32 INET serve config and we want that to run in a custom location uh, but first before we run it from there we want to on our one machine that we trust we say hey this is all ready for us we're going to export. So let's set up a dummy site here and so we're going to go to Contoso and we're going to let's create this here. Okay, and for our bindings, we would clash if we kept the same host. So let's just say contoso.com. This is just a test. Okay, so now what we see is something unique in this configuration. If we achieve our goal correctly on the other node, we should see this contoso.com, and later we should be able to make a change, and it's immediately available on all the other nodes. So that's what we want to see, is any change we make on one is available on the other. So what we do is we start here in shared configuration. Let's do an export. And now we're going to put in the path. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can use a local path, and this is my preferred way. I've tried a couple different ways, 
and I've always reverted back to the local path as much as possible. It has no dependency if one server fails, no big deal. It just keeps working off the local copy and you just depend on replication to keep it in sync. You can use a UNC path and if the server fails, it's fine. It will keep running from a cached copy until the other server reboots. So if both servers, let's say your your master server that holds the UNC path or whether that's a SAN or whatever, if that's down when your server is booting up, then it's not going to have any configuration to grab from. So it's well thought through as the best solution possible, but it's not fail proof. And so I prefer this. If you use a UNC path, you have connect as options that you can use. But we're not going to, and it's actually going to work off local system. So that's why there's a little bit of difference depending on which path you take here. So for the path, we're going to do inet pub is share config. That's the folder that's replicated that we just covered. Now, here's what happens. Um, there is certain information that can be encrypted, and the credentials are the most common. So let's say you have a username and password assigned to a site's anonymous user or the app pool custom credentials, then that information is encrypted and what you need is for each machine in this set to be able to decrypt that and to run it. And so what it does is it gets the machine key. Now I'm not talking about the ASP.NET machine key. I'm talking about the Windows machine key. And it's going to take the machine key from this server and it's going to password protect it and make it available so that the other machines will get that machine key. Now it's important to understand and follow this path because this comes in handy in uh, future weeks as we cover this more. So what we need to do is put in a good password. It won't let you put in a sloppy one because it's the machine key is a critical part there that it's encrypting. So what we're going to do is we can go to the folder where we just exported this. We'll take a peek at it and notice that we have our two files plus here is the machine key that's encrypted. So you're kind of two encryptions deep, right? Because the machine key is what you use to encrypt and decrypt, and we're now encrypting it with the password that we just set. So we don't want to forget it, although if you do forget it, no big deal, just export it again. So now what we do is we're going to use it. So all that did is export it. We didn't actually set it up yet. Now we actually point to it. And so we go to the same path. I have share config. Now, Notice this username and password, I'm not going to fill this in. I don't have to because I'm using a local path that local system has access to. If I was using a UNC path, then I must specify the credentials here. So I'm going to hit apply, and now it asks for that encryption key that we set when we did the export. And it needs that the one time only. And so it's done. It gives us a warning. It says your existing one has been backed up. and you can restore it later, but everything's done. And so the changes are done. It says you should restart IS Manager. We actually don't need to because nothing's changed. And in fact, let's not since we don't have to. And this is done. So you can't really tell the difference. The site's going to work. This is all fine. And it's just pointing to and using a different folder. Now, let's go and we'll set up the other folder and then I'll come back and just kind of cover some things to keep in mind. Okay, so I'm going to switch back to the other server and notice the shared config folder actually now has those three files in it. Okay, so we can minimize that. That's just handy to be aware of. And now here's how easy it is to join a new server. Of course, I had to make sure that it was installed. Everything, the same information was installed on each. It looks about the same. And of course, we installed DFS in last week's lesson. And so now what I do is we'll open this up and then if we expand the sites notice we just have the default site because it's not part of the farm yet this is on his local node so I go to share configuration at the global level and I don't have to export we did that on our master node our first one and so now all I do is just join it and so I use the path and again I like to use the local one this is what we're prepping for I don't have to do a username and password because it's a local path, and I hit apply, it's going to ask the exact same information, the encryption key, and we hit OK. We have the same prompts as last time, and it says we want to restart. Now, actually, we can get away without watch. I'm going to hit the F5 key, and because there's no significant differences, it actually worked. Uh, but uh, just to make it happy, let's close and reopen this, 
And that was it. And there's some things to be aware of we'll cover in future lessons. But in terms of getting them in sync, look at this. You now have the Contosa.com. In fact, on the web server, let's just add, let's do something new. In fact, let's try something. How about we'll go to Contosa.com and let's do something that is replicated in the config file, which is Windows Authentication. Aha! Okay, look at this. We do have an error, and this is a useful error to notice, is notice the C, INET, pub, Contosa, web.config can't be read if we're trying to edit anything in Contoso. And the reason is because we haven't set up the file content and on the second node. So that, you would also want to use something like DFS, whatever your preferred choice is to keep it in sync. And we had a folder called Contoso. And right now I'm just going to fake it to make it happy. And it just needs that folder to be happy. So now I go back to Contoso and it worked. But notice this, that you want to make sure not just the IS shared config, but of course all the content for all the sites are also kept in sync. Now I'm going to go to Contoso and let's go to our authentication. And we'll go to Windows Authentication is disabled. Let's enable it. Okay, so I hit enable. Now as fast as that, I'll switch over and I'm going to go to Contosa.com, go to Authentication, and Windows Authentication is now enabled. So this is sweet. In comparison to IS6, there was a lot that's involved. Now there's no issues whatsoever with this. It's immediately available and uh, you can see every any change that you make. Okay, so now a couple things to be aware of. One is anything related to a share to the shared config, and this is anything that's saved in application host config is replicated. So your content is not, as we just saw, replicated. Another thing to keep in mind is delegated configuration, which we covered a few months ago. And this is where things like compression is actually saved to the web.config of the local site. It's not saved to application host config. So it is not moved back and forth the same way. You need to make sure that you're keeping the site content in sync if you're going to be used, turning on a feature like compression through the through the IS manager anyways. So a couple things to, to watch for there. Also any runtime information is not maintained. So watch this. If I go to Contosa.com and see right now it's started. So I'm going to go manage website. Let's stop it. See the icon looks different. Now I'm going to switch to the other site and I'm going to refresh and notice it didn't stop it here. And the reason being that that's runtime information that's not saved in the configuration. The same with re recycling an app pool. If I recycle this app pool on the web node, it will not recycle it on the other nodes. Okay, so again, that's runtime information. It's not handled in the shared configuration. So it's very useful to be aware of what information is kept in sync and what information is not. And one other piece of information that's very useful to be aware of is our certificates. And if we were to grab a certificate like this, and notice I'm going to add a binding for HTTPS on site Contoso, and I've specified just a self-signed cert on the server. Now I'm going to switch back to the other server. I just switched here, and I'll go to Contoso. We'll go to the bindings. Now notice the HTTPS binding is here, but the certificate information itself was not replicated. And I'll show you the reason for that. And you can see here that the certificate, the binding is here, but the certificate itself is not maintained in the configuration. And you'll need to use a tool like NetSH for the command line to do that, or manually do it if there's only a couple nodes. You can manually do it on the nodes. So in future weeks, I want to cover this in more depth. Some things we want to keep in mind, for example, in installers will have some problems. So we want to do some staggered installs that we want to cover, and there's some tricks to do with that that I want to be able to cover, adding and removing nodes from the configuration. But this is our first intro, and really, that's all there is to get a node installed. You do an export from the first, and then on the first, you, you link it up, and then on the other nodes, you would link them up. And of course, you have to make sure that your content folder is keeping in sync as well. There you have it, IS Share Config. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you have a great week, and hope to see you again next week.